Should we talk drums? Should we talk drums? Should we talk drums? I've been going crazy the last couple days with drums. I finally got this microphone pop in, which I've shown you guys before, but let me. So now I have all four of my microphones going crazy. This has been the game changer. I'm not going to lie. Now that I spent a week EQing drums, changing mic positions, checking my phase, tuning my drums, like muffling my drums, playing them louder, playing them quiet. The more I've been testing and all those things I just mentioned are like exponential amount of change. Like just to figure out where to place the mic, what mic to use, what snare to use, what head to use on your snare, how to tune the snare, how to play the snare, what preamp to use, how much to use it, what compressor to use, how much to use it, how to EQ it. There's so many different things. Um, this, of everything else, this is the most unreplaceable thing in my setup. Not that my setup is that sick or figure my, my setup's getting figured out. But there's a D112 in the kick. I'm pointing the wrong way. Super fire kick mic. Um, Rufio showed me drums that he did with it, and I fucking love them so much. That's really why I bought it. Um, the 441, am I going the wrong way? Fuck. 441 on the snare. Oh, how can I? Wait, is it? Ooh, fire. 441 on the snare, and then on the bottom, I'm doing the 421, both Sennheiser microphones. This is so hard to do this point. 421, 441. Why does it look like my arm's not my arm? It looks like it literally looks like this shit is not being controlled by me. 421 right here, 441 up top. We're using this bad boy. I'm so high. <laughs> this is an AKG D19. Why am I using this microphone? Um, yes. I bother the fuck out of this one mix engineer. I think he hates me. His name's Steve Christensen. Um, he mixes the Kruangbin records, most notably for me anyway. Um, he mixed their new record and I called him, or no, sorry, I didn't call him. I DM'd him immediately after and was like, yo, is there anything you can tell me? Is there any game you can give me? Da, 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 da. He gave me some game about this microphone. He said he uses it as a mono overhead. So what the fuck do you think I'm doing? I'm using it as a mono overhead. Let me tell you, oh, wait, let me tell you another thing. Because I know one, or two, one person at least is going to try to go buy one of these or some shit. It's AKG D19. Look at this. That's not normal. That's not a normal XLR. If you try to plug a normal XLR into that shit, you're going to be very upset. This shit comes with its own special connector thing from London that you need. It's not XLR, stupid. It has a special little indent on the top. This is, this is very different. So I got this microphone. I tried to plug it into a normal mic cable, which all my other microphones go into. Does not work. I had to order from London some other little connector that basically you have to have someone make you one of these because it's so old that they don't make this connector anymore. It's called like DIN or some shit. I don't even remember. But just know, this shit is not a game. I had to get this piece and that's why I had to wait for so long because it took four weeks to get the piece. Um, I had to wait weeks to get that connector. So just know, I'm very new to using anything old I didn't this I didn't plan for like 2020 to be the year where I was like going to start using shit from the 70s. I don't know why I have an old keyboard and a fucking cassette player and all this shit now, but I do and I'm starting to realize like that's the biggest detriment. You know what I mean? Is like sometimes these old connectors, these old parts, an old VU meter like Monty just bought uh the same tape machine as me. You see oh other way. On the floor right here you can see Monty just bought my same exact tape machine. It's the same exact TAC, nothing different. Trying to find 
pieces for it is like damn near impossible. And he's gone to a couple like repair shops near here who do like 10 inch tape, who do all different kinds of tape machines. And like, they're really just not available. Like when you look for certain pieces or certain parts or certain old motor things, like it depends on the model, but for this model, for the TX I have, like they only made it for a couple years and it just doesn't do it no more. So basically I've been in here for days just moving microphones tiny inches like playing the same pattern move the microphone a couple inches play the same pattern move the microphone a couple inches play the same pattern and i've been doing that for fucking days now um okay boom 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 let's look at all three this is what we got going on bow okay so we are running the four microphones that we were just talking about through one, two, three, four. These are called API 512C preamps. I have the pad engaged on, I think, all of them. When you click that button that says pad on the preamp, what it does is it just like brings the signal way down i was noticing like my kick no matter how far away my kick mic was like the kick was so loud when i was seeing ableton it was just peaking regardless once you hit pad boom engage the pad it brings down the fucking signal way smaller and you can turn your pre up sick it lowers it by 20 db says smarty pants in the chat we got a couple big brains in here i don't really know how this shit works but i'm gonna explain it anyway so feel free to correct me as we go um here is the little template i've been making for myself i have it set up so anything i have running through my apollo i can instantly just use a guitar my roads my dx7 obviously all the drums i have a simpler in case i want to add a sound really quick my tape machines right there in case i want to run to my tape machine my cassette this guy is right there in case i want to use my cassette but i have everything set up I don't think we're going to really use most of this shit today, but let's turn all the, Oh, we have signal. Okay. All the mics are on. I have a snare group so that I can take the top mic and the bottom mic for my snare and kind of just do the same thing with both of them. Um, all I have on that group is just a low cut because I'm, I was getting a lot of like low kick, low hum, whatever from my drums. Something I want to try today, I might try it while we're here, is I want to put a little gate on my snare and a gate on my kick to get rid of some of the bleed. Maybe we'll try that. But um, snare top, snare bottom. I'm, f I'm phasing with utility my top snare because I noticed whenever I had, the f when I changed the phase with utility on the top snare, I got the best combination. At first, I took the bottom snare and flipped the phase I didn't like how that sounded as much. I know this is confusing. I know the idea of phasing is super confusing, but here's how I understand it. Correct me if I'm wrong. I got a microphone on top of my snare. I got a microphone on bottom of my snare. They're both recording the same fucking thing at the same time. The signal might get to one a tiny bit later, maybe because of the chords, maybe something else. I don't fucking know, but one microphone might pick up the sound a little bit later than the other one because of the placement, because of where they are. So there could be this issue where they cancel each other out because they're not quite aligning as far as what this mic's hearing and what this mic's hearing. Whenever you go, in Ableton at least, you can just drop a utility on here, like someone said last time in the chat, and then you can click left and right, and you can check the phase. I've noticed that between all the drum mics, you have to do this a little bit. You have to kind of figure out, okay, my overhead's hearing the same thing as my room mic. Maybe I need to check the phase on one of those two things or blah, blah, blah. But that's something that's still somewhat of a mystery to me. I just know every tutorial I watch and every person I know who knows what they're talking about. Oh, there it goes. Every person I know who knows what they're talking about, they all tell me um, how important all that phase cancellation is. I'm going to have to just keep charging this damn thing. Um, where do we charge? Bow. Okay, so snare group just has a cut on it. I have this reverb engaged in case I need it because I was using it. But we're doing the utility to make sure the top mic 
is phased, so it's not fucking up the signal between the two mics. I have a, a UAD pull tech on here. I'm definitely using a preset. I want to say that for if you go to the pull tech EQP EQ and you go to the snare basic preset. I think that's what I used. I don't want to change it right now. Um, on the bottom, I have another Poltec, and it's a different one. I think it's Snare Exciter. Same exact EQ. Top one, preset Snare Basic, Snare Exciter. I didn't do too much changing with the presets because what I did after that was some EQ with this. I know that looks fucking crazy right here. I know this looks insane, but... um. This is from the dynamic presets, and it's just touched up a little bit. So I might have grabbed one or two of these groups and adjusted them. But because I'm an idiot and I don't know that much about drum recording, these help me a lot. Not only because they're dynamic and they move with, if I use a different snare, if I play something a little differently, it's going to kind of EQ based on that. But they have overhead presets. They have snare top, snare bottom. Snare, they have two different versions for snare top, snare bottom, snare salvage. Inside kick, outside kick. I'm not really doing an inside and outside situation. I just have no front head on my kick, and it's just all the way in there. But um, oh my, I'm not even looking at the chat. I'm just saying dumbass shit. Someone said, "I'm hey, Kenny, you just saved up enough money to buy a new plugin. I'm torn between complete control 12 and auto tune control 12. You're gonna get so much shit in there. Uh, I think this EQ I added on top of the pull tech." In both instances for my snare, gave me a way better vibe. Um, I'll show you the difference once we record some shit. Then there, I got a little reverb. My kick, another pull tech on there. Same one. Can't remember the fucking preset, but it's definitely a kick preset. <laughs> the overhead. The overhead is that old ass microphone. The overhead is going to be that AKG D19 that I had to wait for fucking six weeks for a connector. Um... That microphone sounds so fucking good. I'm not really doing that much shit to it. I have this like overhead preset that I kind of, I think I ducked some extra lows out of it here, but it's an overhead mud cleanup preset. And I'm using Devilock, which as you know, if you're a Tame Impala fan, Devilock gives you kind of like a Kevin Parker vibe. What he uses is a Sure Level Lock, which is a piece of equipment that is really hard to get now. Ever since people figured out that he uses it, everybody bought it um this is the replica i don't like using a lot of it if you see i have the crush on zero and i have the crunch on like th two and a half it just gives my overhead a little bit of grit and then what we do once we have all that stuff like pretty well eq'd check some of the phases do some of that shit can i turn this on yet boom once we do all that we're going to run it through the, uh, come on, yeah, we're going to run it through the UAD 1176. These are going to give it this whole other kind of like shine, this whole other kind of boost. Some people might be on the side of like, don't do all this devil ox shit that I'm doing to the overhead until after and maybe just put this on the final drum bus once it's already been through the 1176 there's a lot of schools of thought this is just how i was doing it yesterday i got some really good drum breaks let me show you i'll show you a break i made i made this break in front of monty yesterday like the playing sucks but the drums sounded so good monty took this audio So the, the playing sucks, but those are some drums I did yesterday. So we're using the same exact template that I used yesterday when I did that. There's nothing different about this. I'll show you some stuff I did towards the end, and I want to try doing that gate stuff, but let's just get a break in there. I'm, I'm not even going to worry about a tempo. I'm just going to play something so we have something. Um, okay. Let's record some shit. 
I'm gonna just play something real easy so it's easy to use. This over here so y'all can see me. So do all three. Uh, I wish I could just do the that and that. Fuck it. some shit to work with. Come back over here. All right, so now that we have some drums in. What happened? Why can't you see that? Oh, you can't see because this is. <laughs> um, okay, now that we have some drums in, well, let's listen to them. Let me put camera two back on charge. Okay, boom. Um, here are the drums that we just recorded with just those EQs on them right now. So that's just the EQs straight through the mics. They haven't been run through the compressor yet. There's nothing really going on. Um, let, so listen to what we got though in the th like the four different mics. This is the overhead, that old ass microphone. Just that mic by itself sounds kind of fire. Here's a tip I got from somebody from the Discord. A last stream, I was just showing you guys like how I had my stuff routed. We didn't get this far. And someone was like, yo, Kenny, I heard you saying you were looking for drum tips. One tip I have is I listen to my overhead mic and then I adjust based on that. So if I'm not hearing enough snare, if I'm not hearing enough kick, whatever it is, I bring that up based on the overhead. So when you listen to this, I definitely feel like there could be some more kick. So maybe I adjust my kick based on that, but either way, the overhead mic alone sounds so good, but this is the difference with the devil lock and without the devil lock. That's the fake Kevin Parker, like sure level lock thing. So this is the overhead by itself. This is with level lock. Listen to the difference. Big difference. Um, people like to get crazy with this. Like, listen when you start adding some crunch and shit. That's just my overhead microphone. But it's like an amp. Um, so touch of evil to me just gives just enough because we're about to remember we're about to run this shit through the 1176. So I just put a little bit. I still got my kick and my snare on top of that. Remember and put this back down to zero. I'm just trying to show y'all. Listen to the difference between the snare mic and uh, the two snare mics. So I figured this the top mic, let's go back to camera two, hold on. Um, this is how dumb I am. So I figured that the top mic, come here, come here. This mic right here, I thought that this mic right here was gonna be like really sharp and was gonna sound like really hard like really like the young chop part of the snare the really like you know what i mean like tingy part and i thought this bottom one 
was going to be the body of the snare. The bottom one is all of the shine, and the top one is like the hit. Because you know, like, if you take a snare drum and you turn the, like, the snare wire off the snare drum, right? This is what the snare drum sounds like. When you turn the snare wire on the snare drum, it sounds like that. That snare wire is on the bottom of the snare. So it makes sense that the bottom mic gets all of that shiny shit, and this top mic just gets that hit, like that dead skin. For placement, I'm doing, uh, I'm doing this microphone about two drumsticks. So I put two drumsticks on top of each other. That's about how I, how I have it above my kit. And the reason I have it all the way over on this side is because I just really need hat. I'm not focused on my floor tom. I'm not really doing a lot of breaks with a bunch of cymbals. I need hat, kick, and snare. This is getting the majority of my hat. With the kick mic, depending on how you want your kick, we all are used to using fucking foreign tech and OZ kicks. We obviously all want our shit to punch super hard. What I noticed is the further in, the further towards the batter head it is, the more attack you get, the further out, the more live, the more real it sounds, like the kind of bigger it gets. So I'm finding a balance right in the middle, but the muffling matters. And notice, like, you'll even see on my cymbals, these little gel things or, like, this tape. All that stuff is to muffle the drum. So I'm really just getting, like, these clean hits. Fuck. 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 All right. Um, let me charge it. It's all right. It's all right. Let me charge it. And then we'll start processing shit. All right. So you're not going to get to see it run through the 1176 in real life because you're not going to get to see the fucking camera um guys relax okay but we're gonna we're about to run this through the 1176 so i put all the eqs on everything there's a couple pull tech eqs on everything there's a couple fab filter dynamic eqs because i don't know what the fuck i'm doing and then we put a little bit of Sound Toys Devilock on here. But that's pretty much all that's on the drums. The rest of it is just like placement and this and that. Oh, yeah. Wait, I wanted to show you the snares. So listen, this is the snare top. See how it's just kind of like a, it's just like a, it's, it doesn't have a lot of shine. Like, it's just got like body. This the bottom is like the snare. You see what I mean? Like, I don't know why. It just seemed to me like the snare that's pointing towards the top of the snare would get all of that. It doesn't make sense, though. The, the fucking marching band shit is on the bottom. The snare wire is on the bottom. So notice when you put this snare with this snare, you get this snare. And it fucking hits way harder. You can obviously do a little bit of less of either one. But before I send it to the compressor, one other thing. And then let's hear my kick. I kind of like how my kick's been sounding. Um, come on. My kicks are kind of hitting. Not gonna lie, my kicks are kind of hitting. Um, let's let me try some gates. I've never done this before. I'm, I'm just gonna use the stock one for now. But uh, make sure my Okay, got rid of, we're getting rid of some of the snare. Obviously I could do this manually too, but I'm lazy. Um, Okay, okay, okay. Let me put a little gate on the bottom too. Okay, 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 okay. And then we have a 
That way we have way more control of the hat now with the overhead. Okay, pretty good. Let's, I'm gonna add that reverb onto the snare. Let's send that to our 1176. Shut up about CLA drums. Y'all are stupid. Um, can I turn this back on? Let me see if I can show y'all. 1176. Boom. All right. So now we're going to take that group of drums. I'm sending it to 14 just to one of my 1176s and then we're going to record what's coming out um let's go coming in a little hot let me just turn this down a little bit It sounds way fatter though. <laughs> I like this break. This break right here is the one. Um, okay, so now you're hearing the drums through the 1176. Listen to the difference. I know it's clipping a little bit. It's all good. Listen to the difference. Um, this was how we had our drums before. This is how we have our drums now. Much more controlled, much tighter, a little beefier. Um, so now let's say we want to use this. Let's say I want to make something to this. Take this right here. Let me trim it up a little bit. I have no idea what tempo I was actually at. Um, I'll get on work. Now maybe drum break a little drum break from scratch i mean i'm not obviously from here there's there's tasteful things you know what i mean i really want to go for a d'angelo kind of drum sound so what i'm going to do is tighten the fuck out of my snare i'm going to eq things a certain way i'm going to mic things a certain way that was me last night just getting my mics in the first position and just getting them like decent you know now yeah like felix that's a good call we could take this and we could throw it right to the tape. I forgot about that. <laughs> um, hold on. Uh, dead. Fuck. Um, all right, hold on. We can run it to tape real quick. Let's put the tape machine on. 
if we have this set up correctly, it should be no big deal. Looks like the tape is right there. Um, let's go to source. I'm seeing it on the tape machine. Okay. Um, let's record that to the tape. Do it at seven. Okay, let's hear what we got. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Why is the kick in a little clippy though? The kick's getting a little clippy. I got RX7. We could fuck with RX7. Hold on. Who's good at RX7? What would you, if you were, if you use RX7, what do you use right now? Do I use spectral denoise? What do I use? Dehum? What is the vibe? D clip? Where's D? Oh, D clip. Okay. It kind of sounds better, but like not really. Oh, high quality. I don't know why I just went to medium. That's so weak. Now it's getting artifacty a little bit. Hold on. Check D click. Or was that? D click. Where do you see D click? Where is D click?
Oh, it's its own plugin. Oh, D click is the shit. Oh, that's it right there. I do this, guys, I do this tape shit, guys. I know, I know I seem like one of those producers who just like flips loops. I record drums to tape. What? Big brain, big brain.